Today I'm going to talk about imaging multiple myeloma using a specific biomarker with gallium-68. Multiple myeloma is the second most common age-related hematologic malignancy reported in the United States. It is a cancer that develops from the plasma cells in the bone marrow. So during the development of multiple myeloma, there are several characteristic stages, and these are known as the CRAB symptoms. These are hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, and bone fractures. As I summarize in this figure, a myeloma cell can have interaction with all these markers in the bone compartment. So during the progression of this disease, it is very important to have understanding about the bone microenvironment. So these are the current clinical modalities used in multiple myeloma uh, right now. Due to the time restraints, I will not go through all of them. But most of these methods has issues with the sensitivity or early detections with the multiple myeloma. I would like to focus on the last one, the nuclear modality, uh, the FTG PET CT. It is a very sensitive method to detect multiple myeloma in the extramodular uh, environment. But when the disease is actually confined into the bone, uh, there is issues with the uh, high background hematopoietic environment because the other hematologic cells also depends on the glucose uptake. So it might be better to have a biomarker that is specific for multiple myeloma that can register an early event in the progression of the disease. Our suggestion is using VLA-4. It is a non-covalent heterodimeric transmembrane addition receptor that plays a critical role in myeloma cell interaction. Here's how this works. The inactive close integrin undergoes a conformational change to go for an activated open integrin, and the myeloma cells overexpress with this activated open integrin. How do we target VLA4? By using LLP2A. It is a tripeptide-based peptidimeric ligand which has a very high affinity for activated VLA4. It's a these values are down to two picomolar level. And here is the structure of this small molecule. And uh, before going into gallium-68 data, I would like to show the previous work that, done in the Shokin laboratory uh, with copper-64, a cyclotron produced isotope, with using a cross-bridge uh, chelator. This in vivo blocking study was done to show the specificity of this tracer with the subcutaneous tumor model. And uh, we have done in vitro binding studies to show the affinity of the target. And the, this imaging study is very interesting. A myeloma progression has been imaged over the period of time to see the growth of these lesions, uh, tumor lesions, uh, over the uh, few weeks. I hope you can see these uh, small dots. Now, the focus of this research is we kind of use the same target and change the chelator, uh, the cross-bridge chelator, into a more versatile daughter chelator and use gallium-68 in this study. Those are very two subtle changes, but we think with these, it can be improved for the clinical translation that we are going to do. So the two reasons is the gallium generator. Gallium is a generator produced radioisotope. It's more reliable and available in most part of the world compared to the cyclotron producer radioisotopes. And gallium-68 has been proven in uh, clinical studies. And uh, using this data, it opens the window for us to do potential theranostic applications. Already, we have done some test labeling with the uh, lutetium-177 and actinium-225 therapeutic isotopes. So the goal of this study is to evaluate the gallium dota peg llp 2 a in preclinical models of multiple myelo myeloma and determine dosimetry for translation into clinical imaging. So the labeling with uh, gallium-68 can be done very easily with the ammonium acetate buffer 
And uh, this can be QC'd in two methods, either HPLC or TLC. And uh, before going into uh, animal studies, we have evaluated the stability of the complex. Here, an in vitro stability study was done using human serum, and it was evaluated that 98% was intact even after three hours. And we have done a, a in vivo stability study by injecting a radioactive dose to a mouse and then uh, take, uh, taken blood uh, in a timely manner. What I have shown here is the one hour post injection HPLC tracer, and it was found to be 90% intact, uh, as we see. So, to go for myeloma, like we have done, cerebral uh, animal model, we are using the Syngenic immunocompetent mouse model. By uh, the injecting the 5T GM1 cells, into cartilage mice into three different methods, subcutaneous, intratibular, and intravenous. We have our three tumor models. I will show you one of the uh, uh, models with the optical image. This is uh, the tumors, uh, the cells are injected, IV, uh, and this was imaged four weeks later. You can see the spleen and uh, the tumor uh, generated in the femur light up nicely with the uh, green fluorescence protein. And we have done many PET studies. Uh, I have shown two of them. Uh, in the figure, what's on the left to you is the subcutaneous tumor, and what's on the right uh, is the intratibular uh, tumor. So of course, these are the image with pairs, so that's why the video has uh, two of them with the sub-Q and IT. Here, the, the sub-Q tumor has been uh, grown in the extramedullar environment, and the IT tumor, it is actually within the bone. So uh, the trace accumulation shows uh, nicely there. And these are maximum intensity projections with one hour dynamic PET scans, and uh, all these are in the same PET scale. So uh, using these PET images, we have summarized them into the uh, time activity data. Here, I'm comparing the three uh, tumor models with the muscle uh, over the period of time. You can see the uh, tumor cells accumulate the gallium and uh, saturate in a very quick, uh, quick time. Uh, taking this linear portion of the saturation, I have plot this uh, bar chart so you can uh, compare these quantitative values of each tumor model uh, side by side. We have done uh, post pet uh, biodistribution studies. This is from the intravenous tumor model, and uh, there is a tenfold uptake difference with the malignant bone marrow compared to the controlled mice. There is also a contrasting difference in the bone and, uh, and the spleen. And we have also done uh, autoradiography studies. This is uh, the subcutaneous tumor and intravenous tumor compared with the uh, femur of the controlled mice. And uh, these are sections of the same tumor. You can see the heterogeneity of the uptake uh, with the gallium-68. And then uh, in the intravenous tumor, although you cannot see the outline of the bone, these activity are within the bone region. And uh, by drawing ROIs, here's the quantification. You can see the difference between the control and the two tumor models that, you, that is used in this study. With, this, uh, uh, with the PET dynamic data, we have gone to a little bit of complex study. Uh, we have calculated the in, in vivo receptor density quantification using Logan analysis. and. Uh, Here's how the data looked like. Uh, uh, the distribution volumes of the tumor versus muscle was calculated, and the most important data that coming out of this work is the binding potential in vivo, which is about 6.4, 6.04 for this intravenous tumor. What is interesting is these are non-treated uh, tumor models. The all three tumors, uh, tumor models has these similar values, 
But this is interesting in future when we are going for the targeted study, the therapeutic studies, we can compare these therapeutic regions with the change of the binding potential uh, using this method. And uh, we have also done human organ radiation dose estimate by using uh, biodistribution data of uh, non-tumor bearing mice. Uh, it was a huge study. We, it was, we were taken five my, time points and five, five mice for each group and done for male and female. You can see the blood clearance from uh, this study that uh, it was interesting that female mice seems to have a higher uh, blood uptake compared to the male mice. And this was similar in the copper studies too. And the most important thing here, the dose limiting organ was the bladder for both male and female. And we are currently uh, planning for the traces toxicity studies. Uh, you will let you know about these results very soon. With this, I'm gonna conclude uh, the, this presentation by like, uh, this gallium dot uptake LLP2A was prepared with high radiochemical purity and this, these were shown to be stable. And the agent was evaluated in the Coleridge Syngenic mouse model. And uh, this, uh, this target uh, displayed a good tumor uptake uh, and favorable dosimetry in the preclinical studies. And we are planning to carry this agent towards the human studies for non-invasive imaging against the uh, OXPS uh, VLA4 with myeloma, multiple myeloma. And actually this is a, a team project. I'm only the radiochemist. I was privileged to given the chance to present this. Uh, a big thank goes to all the members there and especially Monica Shokin who is in the audience right now for heading this project. And these are the funding opportunities. And I'm gonna conclude this talk with this image, this was taken last month when the second presidential uh, debate was held in our campus. And uh, since we are eagerly awaiting the election results, I thought it's a good st stopping point for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting uh, presentation. <laughs> the paper is open for discussion. Are there any questions from the audience you have? I have a question. You know that we do a lot of imaging with, uh, in myeloma with CXCR4, so yes. could you comment on the differences maybe between your compound and CXCR4? Both of those are addition re uh, receptors, right? Like, uh, so the, the reason we like uh, VLA4 is that this sh goes through this additional activation stage, which we think it's a more uh, receptor targeted based uh, approach, but I mean, uh, we have seen your images, they, they, they all look nice, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? If not, then uh, thanks a lot again. Thank you very much.